so I can do whatever I want. <laughs> no one's stopping me. <laughs> Her boss is here. Hello and welcome to the Barker Lounger Limited. I am one of your two co-hosts, Ashley Bernhardt. I am joined by my other co-hosts, Nicole and Nania. Um, today is the, the the daylight savings thing. It's great to get daylight back, but it really blows. <laughs> it really blows, and we need to stop doing it. I don't know why we keep losing an hour on our weekends. <laughs> and uh, whoever decided that, like capitalism <laughs> yeah i woke up this morning in like a cold sweat like i woke up and my first my eyes popped up and i went what time is it <laughs> and it was like so completely thrown off but i am loving the extra hour of sun that I'm is nice to at night it's to fun. walk and like enjoy life after after work <laughs> but um yeah i've been i just like three o'clock came and i was like I got to pass out <laughs> right now. <laughs> I can't possibly do anything else. Um, yeah. So, uh, I don't know. It's a shitty Monday. Shitty Monday. But um, I don't know. Maybe this discussion of pieces of her uh, will help it out a little bit. We're going to be talking about yeah. pieces of her. It's a Netflix series. Um, I guess if you're on Netflix, you're aware. I think it hit its top 10 in its top 10 at netflix right now and this is we've been talking about this for weeks it feels like or the last few episodes uh yeah. starring tony collette uh, we'll mention a couple of the others but uh we nicole and i were just saying how like they're not really known actors to us uh so it's really tony not collette quite. Yeah, Tony Glett's the big pull. i mean her daughter is played by bella heathcote i think is how you would say her name and now that I'm looking at her stuff, she's an Australian actress. So maybe that makes a little bit more sense to me. But she was in Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. I did hear about that movie. Uh, the I Neon Demon. I saw it. I think it was a, it was a novel before it was a, a movie. Yeah. I and remember they adapted wanting to it. read the novel. I never did. No. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, it does seem like an interesting concept. Uh, yeah. The Man in the High Castle, I know that too, and Fifty Shades Darker, I'll, I watched that, I know exactly who she is now that I'm looking at it, <laughs> uh, and Professor Marsden and the Wonder Women, um, about the man who actually created the character of Wonder Woman, so so she has been in some stuff, um, and Omari Hardwick is also a character in there, and I think people probably know him from Power, that show, Um it's his main thing. But otherwise, unless Ashley, there's anyone that you recognize, but I'm looking just- through this IMDB list and I think I see David Menham has and he, that's about it. <laughs> I don't I'm not oh, seeing wait. familiar faces on this I list. haven't I haven't seen this character yet. Um didn't appear in the opening episode, but Gil Birmingham, people are gonna know from Twilight. I'm looking at him. Oh um, yes, he shows up in yeah. the second episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay, yes, he was familiar face. Um, yeah, and even like uh the creator here, Charlotte uh Stout, I see that she worked on Homeland. Um and then um let's see, House of Cards. And that's all producing credits. I don't, yeah, I don't really know. I don't really know this show except for Tony Collette. Uh, I mean, that's all you really need to do to sell me, though. So, <laughs> uh, you, you, you got me. Yeah. Um, before we get really into the first episode, we're just going to go over the first episode today. Uh, we need to plug ourselves so uh, before i forget and we get to the end of the episode uh you can find the barca lounger limited on twitter at barca lounger pod and you can also find us on instagram at the barca lounger podcast so go search us out uh we try to keep things fun and interesting there and hopefully one day we'll have some uh community to engage with and we can all talk about how we feel about what we're watching and not just hear what Nicole and Ashley think, uh, cause eventually that's gonna be tiresome to me. I, I, I don't know if I care what I think uh, all the time, <laughs> getting sick of me. Uh, but for now it's, it's going, it's going okay. I got Nicole at least to help me out. 
That's always nice. You know, <laughs> one other person. I'm not. I'm not sick of hearing you talk, but we would love to hear from you guys, even if it's not so nice. You know, even if it's a disagreement, <laughs> whatever it is, if it's a strongly worded suggestion about what we're talking about, uh, but we would like to hear from you guys. So check us out on social media and engage, and you know, let us know how you feel. Yeah, let us know about the how you feel about pieces of her. Uh, uh, this is going to get into spoilers for the. It's the first episode, so it's really just a starting episode. But I would say that there's there's spoilers in it. But I would say the trailer has a ton of spoilers because the show is a mystery, and they give a like. If you go back and watch the trailers, you're probably going to be able to piece together a lot of the mystery. So I would say if you haven't seen the trailers. Avoid them <laughs> and just watch the show. Uh, Cause yeah. I, I went to look back at a trailer and I was like, Oh wow, this is, this is putting way too many of the puzzle pieces together. I better shut this off. Uh, so I did. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, we're going to start talking about the first episode, but I mean, I, I know they wouldn't have been able to not put it in the trailer. Cause it's like a big hook for why you should watch it. But it's like something that happens that I was like, Oh, if I didn't know this was going to happen. I'd be like, Oh damn. Like yeah. I would have had like, a really genuine reaction yeah i think um, we're thinking so, of the same thing <laughs> yeah yeah but so i won't i won't spoil that for you even though it's in the trailer but if you're like one of those who like really just wants to thoroughly sit with the show uh and follow it all by yourself and not have any given away avoid the trailer um i'm a big spoiler hater so uh this is why i'm recommending everybody to stay away from the trailer if they haven't seen it yet uh, anyway, let's get into it. Um, do you want me to go first, Nicole, or would you like to go first? Uh, would you like to flip a coin? I don't know how we want to handle it this week. <laughs> um, okay. I'll let you go first because I want to hear what you think. Okay. Because sometimes it doesn't change how I feel about it, but it kind of informs the way that I view certain things. So you go ahead. And I'll jump down. All right. All right. I, I I hate starting off on like a bad a bad foot like this. Like I hate to be like the bad reviewer, but Tony Collette feels like she is um, starring in a different show than everybody else. <laughs> like I'll just put that out there to start. I think that's a good uh -huh. starting point for me. Is that there's a lot going on that's really great with Tony Collette's character and how she's portraying the character. But then we shift to her the daughter's storyline, who's Andy. Uh and I guess maybe we should give the synopsis of this. Um just in case people are like, I have no idea what pieces of her is is about. Um let's help everybody out first because how the hell are they gonna know they want to watch this show if if they don't know what the show is about. So, I mean, their synopsis is when a Saturday afternoon trip to see, this is totally different yeah. than this isn't even this. So again, like they're either giving things away or so now I can't read this synopsis. Um, let me give my own synopsis. <laughs> <laughs> now, like I'm realizing that so much is given away um, in their promotion of, of the show. <laughs> so I'm going to give my own synopsis. Uh, it looks like a, a daughter uh, by the name of Andy, has moved back from New York City um, to help. It was to help her mother with a really bad injury, played by Tony Collette, the mother. And uh, it's her birthday, it's starting out at her her birthday. Her mom takes her out to lunch for a birthday, and a shooting happens uh, that they're involved in, and it triggers a set of really crazy events. Um, that Tony Collette basically stops the shooter. I don't think that's a spoiler. Um, this oh, is basically yeah. the setup of the episode. And it, it triggers a lot, uh, a set of, I'll just say a set of events um, that, <laughs> that make you very suspicious of Tony uh, Collette's character. And she's clearly got a lot going on in her backstory. And her daughter has no idea, has n is just being now informed of her mother may not be uh, who she says she is. <laughs> um, yeah. Her mother yeah. might be a part of some organization we don't know about. Uh, she's got somebody on her tail. Something's going on with Tony Collette. And that's probably the most fascinating part of the show. So anyway, to move on to that, uh, 
I think the shooter scene um, at the at the restaurant was really great. I think that was actually the conversation beforehand was not. <laughs> I'm gonna flat out say like I did not like the dialogue. It didn't feel comfortable. It felt forced between mother and daughter. Um, it felt generic mother and daughter conversation. So I wasn't really a fan of that. Uh, but then the second the shooter comes and he. I mean, now we're into spoiler territory, I would say. So, you guys, if you're watching, you know um, a friend of the fam- uh, a friend of Tony Collette comes up to the table with her daughter. Shooter comes, shoots the daughter, uh, and and he just starts taking out a lot of a lot of the people in the restaurant. And I'd say that from then on until uh, Tony Collette's character gives him the slip <laughs> um, <laughs> slits his throat quite, quite literally uh, that's that was really great like that moment's really great I find and then from going from there it's all like we're setting up this mystery because Tony Collette's like let me let me cover this all up but I, but my daughter's not gonna know why and I'm gonna be really weird to my daughter and I, I don't know there's just like they're setting up the mystery but it's not working for me because <laughs> I, I think I might hate the daughter. I really don't like the daughter's character. I don't like Andy. Uh, I don't know if it's the actress who portrays her. I don't know if it's the lines that she's given. Uh, I think it's a combination of both. <laughs> uh, I really don't want to hate on the yeah. show, but uh, honestly, I I don't know. I can't say that premiere episode of Pieces of Her is superb. I think they're they're trying really hard to set up a mystery uh, to hook you, and they're not focusing on the tra- the traumatic events, and they're focusing on a lot of flashbacks, uh, which are confusing. <laughs> like there's just like pieces of the puzzle that yeah. they just keep dropping. Um, I I don't know. So those are my first initial thoughts on uh, on it. <laughs> yeah, I. I like that you're saying pieces of, like that's what they want like pieces of her you know we gotta put the puzzle we gotta put the puzzle together um I have to agree with you and I think that maybe and I'm hoping this is gonna change as the show goes on I don't know if it might not be the actor or the character or just the fact that like right now because I guess they are spending so much time on setting up this mystery about Tony Collette's character the daughter just feels like a very stock lost millennial i've just Mm -hmm. turned 30 i don't know what i'm doing with my life i lived in new york i'm an artist it didn't work out i'm ashamed you know like it's just we're not really getting anything that makes her feel like a specific person i feel like she just is there um and is scared you know she's constantly scared and (laughs) she's like crying and she's like traumatized so i don't think that we really know her yet and i don't know if as the show goes on we're going to get to know her and maybe will be endeared to her or if there's going to be so much focus on Tony Collette's storyline and like finding out the mystery that she's just going to be like a conduit into that. Like she's just mm-hmm. going to be there. So we find out about what happened to Tony Collette. I feel like that's where it's going. <laughs> it, yeah. I am worried it, it, for I it. Mean, I would be concerned about that because otherwise, yeah, they're setting up the mystery. I would say that as a first episode for me, like it was, satisfying in that okay fine like we understand like there's like a big event violence i agree with you that i think that was very like compelling like the whole thing of the shooting and because i guess the shooting goes so well and i like the way that they coordinated it and then even just like tony collette like her act like just everything that tony collette does is amazing that the conversation right beforehand yeah there are moments like that where it is just very much like I don't know what I would do with my life. And it's like, oh, you should figure it out. It's because I love you. You know, like, they are very cliche conversations. Um, and this is adapted from a book by Karen Slaughter. Um, and and I'm not, crap, I have not read any of Karen Slaughter, okay? like <laughs> I've never even heard of, of the author, so I can't, I can't speak towards the novel. No, but I'm curious about, the adaptation and how close it is to the book material. And like, I know that uh, Karen, she's immensely popular, you know, but she 
turns out these like thriller books that like focus on women and stuff, you know? And so it makes sense to me, like the tone of the show and the pacing of it and how it's going right now, where when I was watching it, I was like, okay, so this is like a book I probably wouldn't read, you know, but maybe I would watch the TV show, which is like what I'm doing. (laughs) I think that it's, it's compelling enough right now. Like that's what I got from the first episode, but I did have those worries that you're talking about where I was like, all right, like, this was fun. It went really fast. You know, I'm like, we're in the mystery. We're going to find out about Tony Collette's past. But I am concerned that as we keep going, I'm going to hit like a wall of, okay. What's going on? You know? <laughs> yeah, like what's what's going on? I'm I'm hoping it doesn't get too convoluted about Tony Collette's past. You know, like I'm getting that feeling. We've got like the guy who's on the phone in San Francisco. Um and oh like, yeah, it's her. I forgot about yeah. that. Oh, that was weird. That was very soap opera esque for me. Um, yeah, it was I definitely. Always, I always cringe at those sorts of setups. I don't know. The show's doing yeah. a lot of things that I think I just don't personally like in TV. <laughs> yeah, I no, I, I I agree with you. I want to. We're gonna keep watching it, obviously. Um, But, you know, it might be one of those shows that is popular and it's fine enough, but we don't love it, you know, but I'm hoping I'll be surprised. The Nine Perfect Strangers. (laughs) Nine Perfect Strangers all over again for us. Yeah, I mean, potentially. And which I and then I know like a lot of people are going to be like, I really like that. It's enjoyable. It's entertaining. It's fine. Yeah. And I enjoyed some of Nine Perfect Strangers. There were certain things that this might be that type of show where... I enjoy certain things right off the bat. I know Tony Collette. Like she's if Tony Collette was not always so working on a higher level. <laughs> she's always where which is why when you said like she seems to be in a different show than everybody else. I mean, it really feels that way. Like she's acting something she she's acting in a way that nobody else in the show is aware that they're working on a prestigious show. <laughs> no one else got the memo. Nobody else got the memo. <laughs> No, I mean, and it's not, I mean, it's also the writing, but like we're saying though, like Tony Collette is also getting the same writing from the same person, you know, Um, and she's doing something with it. But even a scene like when they're outside of the hospital and she, I I feel like it's clear to the viewer. She's, it seems like she's being very mean to her daughter and she's Mm -hmm. like, they've just been through this traumatic event and she's like, I need you to get out of the house. Like you got to move out of the house. You got to grow up. (laughs) Yeah. And I feel like in somebody else's hands that could have come off as like very melodramatic and like weird, oh, totally. but the way that she, the way that she plays it, I really believe, like I understood that she just didn't want her home, obviously, because there's going to be some kind of violence later. Um, but she, the way she really plays it in her face, and I got that flash to like hereditary, like the way mm-hmm. that she sometimes where it's like, this woman is like, don't talk to me about this. Like, this is what's happening. Dead like she serious. Yeah, like, dead serious, like, get out of my house, you know? And she's like, why are you doing this? And she's just like, you need to you need to grow up. Like, you need to, like, move out of my house. Like, you need to have your life or whatever. And th- the way that she's doing it, I really believed her. And I really felt like... And then, the, you know, the daughter bursts into tears. Like, she's, like, off to the side crying. And But it made sense to me because there was just this sort of, like, chill. Like, this coldness coming from Tony Collette where you really believe, like... I've really been sick of you this whole time. And like, you're 30 years old and I don't want you to come home with me. Like, I don't want you in the house. And I'm like, damn, like, this is the Tony Collette effect. You know, (laughs) I was like, she's just. Well, she can sell you on anything. (laughs) She's like any character you you hand her, she'll make, she'll make this character feel three dimensional and any lines you hand her, they won't sound, uh, you know, stupid or unbelievable. I mean, while, like, the daughter is yeah. given, you know, fairly okay dialogue in response, but for some reason, I'm, like, not buying into it. I'm not buying into the daughter's response. It's something about the actress is just not working for me. I feel really bad. I don't want to, like, just shit talk this first episode. Um, I don't want to shit talk the show. Like, I don't like to go into television disliking something. That's not me. I hate dislike. Like I, it actually pains me to dislike things. <laughs> um, <laughs> I want to talk well about yeah. things. I really do. Um, I don't like this actor. 
I I don't like Andy's portrayal. I really I don't know. Again, it's maybe it's a combination, but a, it's the same thing though. Like put it in the right hands, and you'll get what you need. I I, I do. There is like a feel to me. Like mm, what if we like put Florence Pugh in here? <laughs> like what if we let Colette and Pugh like go at it? I great. think you'd get a much different scene. Yeah. I mean, and you've, you know, you've seen episode two. We're talking about episode, I haven't seen it yet. Uh, so I don't know if it kind of continues in that same vein. Uh, we've got eight episodes. So I don't know. I mean, I mean maybe it's entertaining enough. It's entertaining. Like, I can't say that, like, the pacing slows down to a point where you're bored. Like, they are easy. They are easy episodes. Yeah. I mean, I want to keep saying more of Tony Collette. You know, well, this I'm is, never going to say no to what Tony Collette is going to do. And, like, there's going to be a climax oh. where she's going to have to, like, she's going to act her ass off. So <laughs> I'm not worried. I'm going to get something I want out of this show. <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, just everything that she's doing, but even there's that promise, I think, in the first episode is like, they know, like, okay, like, this will keep you watching this, like that whole scene of the shooting. um, And then the fallout from that, too. And then obviously, we have like another confrontation in the home. So there's enough to keep you first, you want to find out like, okay, what's going on? Like, what is the backstory? And then Tony Collette is, I think, magnetic enough that you actually care about the character, you know, and we keep getting these flashbacks to i'm assuming a little girl that is tony collette who's freezing out in like a shed you know i think it must be collette (laughs) i i think it's her character hold on let me by the way we keep we're always gonna refer to her as tony collette but let me see what the character's name is because this is gonna (laughs) let's see laura okay that's why i don't remember it's just a it's a normal name okay (laughs) It's a regular name. (laughs) Laura. yeah we just keep saying tony collette uh yeah laura i know who we're talking about (laughs) Yeah. Be more confusing to say Laura, probably. <laughs> Who's Laura? Honestly, yeah. <laughs> You're probably right. Um, but I guess these are flashbacks of her when she's little, like after she gets stabbed, like she's talking about it being cold and is it snowing. So I'm assuming that she's flashing back to when she was younger. Um, I am genuinely curious. You know, I haven't spoiled anything for myself. I haven't looked into like the whole plot of like the book. So I don't actually know what her past is. Uh, and as I mentioned before, I'm hoping it's not too convoluted. Like, I hope it doesn't Something turn into crazy. like... Like, her parents were yeah. CIA and like, they're this bounty hunters. Because there's weird things. Yeah. And I'm like, wait a second. So like, she had a knife put into her hand and she talked about how like, she, she doesn't feel much in her hand anymore because of a previous accident. So I'm like, wait, is she kind of like, is she into like some kind of organization? Is she like X C I A? Is she X spy? Like I don't know. Like the the theories is just like tur- churning in my head of like who could she be? Uh, so I don't I don't know. But then we see yeah, you're right. Like we see this little girl. So it's like, what does that have to do with? What does her past have to do with? Like how she? It seems like she's still on. She's still hiding a lot and, and running from something now because they even the, – the, they had – you know, the guy come, comes after her after um, after the hospital when she gets home. So – Yeah, and I'm also – it doesn't seem like it, but her, like, ex-husband Gordon, who basically is Andy's dad, I guess, because he raised her. But Which, um, by the way, he's mm-hmm. way too young looking for Andy to be calling him dad. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just I, have to say I, I it. I it have was to. If it's her his stepdad of her or something. Yeah, if yeah it's when he stepdad, showed up. Cool. And it is her, it is her stepdad. So whatever, that makes sense. But I don't know at what point he came into her life. I don't think that they're at the age where she would be calling him dad. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how old? I wonder how old this. I mean, I guess he is probably like Tony Collette's age, but it's right, just that he, he, just, lo- he looks he like he's just, 40. Yeah, no, he really does because I, I like he came in and I, I, there was a picture of him like on the wall, like at her graduation. And I thought from the picture too, I was like, oh, this must be her friend or her ex boyfriend or like whatever it is. Um, there was something very jarring about her being like, dad. I'm like, no, no, <laughs> this doesn't go. But 
but Just fine. Call him Gordon. Um, <laughs> call him we're Gordon, okay with yeah. that. You could still have a nice, friendly, good, loving relationship with him. He could still be a father esque figure, and you call him Gordon. <laughs> and you call him Gordon. Um, but I don't know if he knows anything about her past. You know, at one point, I think when he leaves her at home, he says something like, call them, you know, because she says, like, it's too late. Like, I could have, I should have stopped the shooting or whatever. Like, I knew something was going to happen and it's too late now. And, He said, call them. So I was kind of curious, like, who is he talking about? You know, does he know anything about her background? Because I guess they've obviously been together now for a while. You know, he's known her for a significant portion of her life. So I'm curious then if whatever her dark past is, is it rooted in when she was very young? That doesn't really make a lot of sense to me if I'm trying to think about what the past is. It seems like maybe, like, he... I don't know if he knows about her past, but to me, it seems like maybe because he was her husband, he was let into something like she, you know, maybe she opened up to him. Yeah. So he does know some of something of, of her line of work or past. I I don't even know. Like this might, I might be totally off with this CIA ex spy shit. Like I don't, (laughs) like I'm just going based off of the assumption that she had a knife in her hand and her reaction was to slit this guy's throat with it. I don't think that's a normal um, reaction. Like, I think that's somebody who knows how to fight's reaction. <laughs> so. Yeah, no, I feel like somebody else's rea- would be like, oh my God, like my fucking hand, you know? I mean, or like, even if they're in shock, it wouldn't be to make the connection of, let me use this now to, to cut yeah. this guy's throat, you know? And there's something about the way that it shot too, like the quickness of it. Sweat. Like for a second, I was like, oh yeah, I was like, oh shit. Like I had that moment of, oh my God, like when she just, the way that it was she does shocking. it. That's the most shocking really part was. of the episode. It was because I think I just assumed that she was going to get the gun away from him and and use mm-hmm. that. Um, and you can see too that other people are picking up on that because they're watching it at the hospital and there's like this really great footage. <laughs> I guess yeah, it seemed cool. almost too good. <laughs> That it was too good. yeah. It's a small, it's a small thing, but whatever. There's like the footage of her slicing the guy's throat, and I, you can kind of see from people's reaction, like, oh, that's interesting. You know, like that's a very quick reaction. Like that's mm-hmm. not what a normal person would do. Um, so I mean, if for me, watching one episode, like it did what it needed to do. It got me. I'm going to keep watching it, obviously. I feel like even if we weren't watching it for this, like I would keep watching because I need to find out. Uh, just to satisfy my curiosity and keep watching Tony Collette. And like you said, I'm sure there is going to be like a big climax or like just like probably some great moments for her uh, that will make it worth watching. And I'm hoping that it doesn't disappoint me too much. Uh, I'm really, I'm really hoping that it doesn't hit this moment of like when we get the backstory where I'm like, you know, I gotta like pause it and be like, okay, that was like, all lot. right, yeah, <laughs> that was a lot, <laughs> and not in a good way. There's a this is a lot in a great in a good way of like, wow, this is a lot of trauma this woman's been through, or it could be like, wow, this is outrageous. This would, <laughs> this would never happen. Bad way. So I'm hoping it's the good way. Yeah, uh, it's so interesting because based off the title, I. I really was thinking, oh, pieces of her. Like, we're getting pieces of her trauma. That's what I thought. Like, we're getting what's left of her. Mm. But I don't think that's what the title is signaling now. Now I'm sig- sig- <laughs> it signals to me that it's a puzzle. <laughs> yeah, that it's a puzzle. And I guess the daughter, I guess Andy's going to keep getting little bits of information. And along with her, like, we're going to put it together mm. and, and find it out. Um it's a big mystery, you know, but we'll give it a chance. It is very popular right now. I think now it's it was a number one, but I think it's number two on Netflix. Uh, so people are watching it, but I also I'm interested to see what people are saying about mm-hmm. it. I haven't really I haven't looked at that because sometimes it also does sort of like color right. how I yeah, go into how it. You look at it. It puts yeah. a filter. I try not to read reviews until after I'm done with something. Because yeah, it it puts a filter on it. Um, whichever way, whichever way they say. Like if somebody has n- negative reviews, I might look at it more negatively. If somebody has positive reviews, I might look at it more positively. So I actually do 
I'm that crazy of a person. Like, that's how much of a spoiler. Like, they, that's what I find even spoilerish for me. Somebody's review, even if it has no spoilers in it, to me is a spoiler. <laughs> like, that's how the extreme of how I feel about spoilers is I can't even listen to anyone's opinion about something until I've seen it myself. <laughs> no, but I think that makes sense because it just, it puts you in a certain mood. And, you know, I think also... If you see negative things, there might be things that occur that you would be more forgiving of. You know, you'd be sort of like, okay, fine. But if somebody else points them out first, I'm looking for them. And then I double down on it. And I'm like, oh, yeah. It's more apparent to you. Yeah. Yeah. So it's hard to do just like you're saying, it's harder to overlook it and just bypass it when it's right there staring you in the face now. (laughs) When you could have maybe not noticed it as much. Yeah. So I'm... I'm not looking at anything. I'll look at it afterward. Um, But I am interested to see how other people feel about it, you know, and it it might just be one of those shows that you kind of like, don't think about too hard, you know, you just enjoy it. Yeah. I think Toni Collette will not be popcorn. Like what she'll bring to the table won't be popcorn. But right now it it feels like a very popcorn show. Mm. So, and I'm not a uh, popcorn tastes great. But it leaves you hungry afterwards. So (laughs) it's not fully satiating. So I'd like to say I'm not really in that popcorn club. Um, Mm -hmm. I I do watch my shows for a little heavier, a heavier weight. Also, these are just little nitpicky things. I don't really, I'm not really enjoying the the way the show is shot. Um, There's, just like subtle things that they do with the camera where it lingers on certain things to be obvious to you that I don't like. Like when this is towards the beginning of the episode, when Andy comes home from her shift, she goes into her mother's kitchen and she's putting something away in the dishwasher. Uh, And it's understandable that you would think of your father on your birthday who's passed away. That makes sense to me. But the way the camera like literally takes so much time, it, it, it feels like it takes a full minute to like scan through the pictures on the wall and, and like, then it like zooms in on dad and her or just the father or something. And like, for me, I would rather of you show me a quicker shot of the, like, so she, you know, she looks up and she's having the thought about her father. Like the more realistic way to shoot that for me personally would be, okay, here, where uh, she looks up at the father's image. We can tell we don't need to linger there. We don't need to pan through all of the family photographs on the wall because she's seen them how many times now? Like this was for the audience, you know, I guess that's what I'm saying that's bothered me. This was clearly for the audience. It wasn't the character's perspective because if it was the character's perspective, the camera would have gone up to the picture of dad and her. At least I think she's in the, the, he's in the picture with her. (laughs) Um, I should know because it lingered on it for so long. It's just him. There's a picture of her and her mom and Gordon at graduation, and there's one of him. Okay. Um, Which, again, like, you're not even getting the point across to me because you focused on too many pictures. (laughs) Like, I think I would have gotten the point if it, like, briefly flits by her and her and mom. Okay, dad lingers on it for a second longer. Then we go back. We see her facial expression. We're registering this is her father because we're not idiots. Um... (laughs) And we sit with her actual emotion a little bit longer. Uh, So I don't like camera movement that is specifically for the audience. Uh, I don't know if that, I don't know if you noticed that, but that bothered me. No, I, I did actually. And I think it was just because it went on. It was long. For that, that long. Yeah. That, because I thought, okay, like we're done with the pictures, but then it went back to the pictures. And then yes, when it did like the focus again on the dad. And I did think about that because I was like, okay, these pictures have been here for how long? You're probably constantly these. (laughs) That's exactly my thought. It's like, she knows these pictures. Like it's one thing to like, it makes sense for her to look at the picture of dad and think about her dad and her father on her birthday. That makes complete sense to me. But it doesn't make sense for you to pan for so freaking long over the picture. She knows these pictures. Yeah. Which then signals to me, you were saying it's for the viewer, that maybe 
as we go on, I hope it's not a trend where like they don't trust the viewer. And so they really have to like feed you stuff. They're like, here, here, like that's what this is. Or, you know, like here's the background or here's the emotion, you know, like it's her birthday. This is her dad. He's dead. She's upset about it. <laughs> you guys should remember that she had this dad. And also because I guess, you know, that's another part of the mystery, right? There's another piece yeah, of the puzzle. Yeah, we don't know dad. We don't know dad, and she doesn't remember anything about him. And she's like, he was great, you know. And so then you have that in the back of your mind, like, oh, was he great? You know, <laughs> is he part of this dark past? Like, yeah. what actually happened to this guy? So I think that's also just them really trying to signal, like, this is important. We want you to remember, like, she mm -hmm. had a dad. And that um, always bothers me. Uh, and then it did another little thing like that at the end of the episode where she's driving out of town. And she doesn't have a stop sign. She doesn't have a stoplight. And she literally <laughs> breaks, stops in the middle of the road so that she can turn around and the camera can get us a shot of welcome to Belle Isle, like her leaving Belle Isle, the town. And it's like, no, 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 no. That Don't do that. Don't, <laughs> like, I don't know. That just really bothered me. It's like, no, because in reality, she would keep going. She would look up in her rear view mirror and she would see, welcome. In the rear view mirror, there should be a shot. Welcome to Belle Isle and her leaving it and her going. Like, not, why the hell is she making a hard stop at not a stoplight, at not a stop sign, just to look back at that sign? It's weird. It was like, this is emotional for her. Do you see? Do you see? It's emotional. And it's like, yeah, she could easily just keep looking. Like, you could focus more on the character's face and emotion showing that as she's looking in her rearview mirror at it. I don't know. Is this another thing that bothered me? <laughs> no, I, but it's another thing that now that you're saying, like, it did pop into my head. And because she, like... She turns, she looks at it, and then she turns back, and she's got this face on, like, oh, no. Like, <laughs> there was something also, like, kind of comical about it. Like, these are these are tiny moments, but if they stand out to you that much, then that means that it did not work. You know, like, it's not, it's sticking out to you too much that it's trying to tell you how to feel. Yeah, and it's, it's maybe treating you like you're stupid a bit. Yeah, and it's not letting it, like, it's not actually actually resonating with you then. Like, these yeah. moments I should pick up on and think about subconsciously. And then when I go over the episode, I'm like, oh, and there was that moment there. And there was this moment here. Uh, and, yeah, it's just too, it's too, I'm going to hit you over the head with this right now. <laughs> and it could also, and then it also has to do with, like, this awful, this exaggerated shot. Plus, I don't like the actor's facial expressions <laughs> delivering it. Like, I don't, I don't like Andy. I'm so sorry to this actor. I'm so sorry. I don't think, I just don't like it. I, I'm not, um, she doesn't do anything for me. Uh, she's not doing anything for me, but it's not also sort of not her fault because the character, as, as you were saying, is an archetype and <laughs> she's not doing anything either except for running and being scared. And this brings up another thing that I hate doing this. I hate this. I'm just ripping this fucking show apart towards the end. Like, I like how Nicole's like trying try to leave it on like a nice, hopeful note about like what we can expect and that we're going to follow it. And maybe it will still give us some satisfying things. And I do. I do think that that will happen. I'm in it. Cool. But I'm in it. But here's another thing that I don't like. <laughs> anyway, as I, as I, as we tried not to do that, I just have to mention these things because. Because maybe some people watched it and they, they couldn't figure out like why they felt a certain way or they did and they were like, yeah, I did notice that. And so I, I need to point these things out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> when you're watching something, you need to have a suspension of disbelief to be in it personally. And I'm not like the crazy person where it's like, I question stupid things like why are the <laughs> why are the inanimate objects in Beauty and the Beast talking and I don't get I'm not going to get into like the loophole of their curse and all that crap like I'm not into that kind of shit like no that pisses me off like just just <laughs> let these 
<laughs> let these animated characters in Beauty and the Beast be enchanted and they do whatever the fuck they want. Like, I'm not going to get in that kind of conversation. I'm not into that kind of conversation. I'm talking about more like there's little things that characters do that really take the suspension of disbelief away from the viewer. Those are the things that'll bother me. Uh, so suspension of disbelief is like, I'm totally watching this show. Nothing in the show is unbelievable. And I'm so in it that I totally believe all this is happening, right? That's what suspension of disbelief is. You have now decided that this is all possible and you believe everything you're watching. When a character literally drops her phone and it skids all the way across like, I don't, she so gently dropped her phone and the phone, and this is when she, Annie's in the garage and uh, she she goes into the garage to get her bike, her phone drops and it's kids like way under something, which cool, that could happen, I guess. Like, that's not really what really irked me in that scene. Then she sees the man coming and she's hiding from him, right? Instead of finding her phone... <laughs> And calling 911, like, fine, if you want to pursue the man because you heard glass break and he might be, like, you're, you're worried for your mother, That's those are all totally, I, I buy it. Those are all totally realistic things. But even in, I, I'd like to think, even in my shocked and worried and scared brain, my reflex reaction would be like, find the phone, call 911, then go check on mom. <laughs> like, because what the hell am I going to do without a weapon, without like, I don't know what's going on in there. I just, that's highly unbelievable to me that somebody wouldn't think, and this makes me dislike the character. Why the hell wouldn't you go find your phone and call 911? I don't get it. <laughs> and then... Okay, so there's that. I don't know, Nicole, tell me if I'm overreacting to this. This. No, you're not, but it also just struck me that she is like a 911 operator, too. Right? Like, like doesn't she have some her kind job. of protocol, like, to be like, I think it's best that I get some, like, I know what line to call. Like, she might even know, like, I need to call the sheriff's department or something, you know, and not 911. Because you can, you can yeah. like just call your county police and they'll come quicker than, than, you know, 911. And she might even, you would think she's a 911 responder. She might even think about that. <laughs> um, I don't know. It, it just think, struck, it struck me. Yeah, it struck me as weird. And so I'm a little like, all right, my, my disbelief has now just been, the, the little string is being pulled of, of suspension, suspension, my suspension of disbelief is being pulled a little bit. The string there on that one. And then, <laughs> this is what really drives me. She gets the car, the key to the car. She's trying to find the truck. Now, I understand that maybe you don't want to set off the beeper, right? But she doesn't, at no point does she look down at the fob and go, okay, this is a, this is a Ford. Okay. And like, given there was another Ford on the street, but there was a Chevy and there was a Dodge and, <laughs> and a Ford. So at no point, and I get it, she's panicking, I guess. But I would still like to think as a person with problem solving skills, if I ran outside the house, I'd be like, okay, what car? And I don't see a car. And there's all these trucks. I'd be like, oh, fuck. And I'd look down at the emblem and i go, oh, okay, it's a Ford. It's not a Dodge. <laughs> it's not a <laughs> um, whatever other car that was out there. And go from there. No, she didn't do that either. And then on top of which, she goes around trying to open every car. And by the way, most of those cars were new enough to the point that the alarms are all going to fucking go off on her. So the, my, my dis, like, me believing my belief in this situation is gone now. It's out the window because I don't believe that somebody, if I, I mean, I could buy, okay, maybe somebody doesn't look down at the emblem. Okay, maybe I could buy that. I think that's really stupid. I think she's a stupid character, but okay. I think she's a fucking moron. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry, but I would not go around. Like if, cause then why didn't you just, Unlock the car and see where the light was coming from. I don't get it. You know, like if you're going to go car to car and possibly set off people's car alarms and you're trying not to draw attention to yourself, wouldn't you just fucking beep the car in the first place? And by the way, you have to like, 
when you unlock your car, if you don't hit it, a, if you don't hit the fob a second time, it's not going to make the noise. It's just going to do the light thing. So I don't really know what she was doing there. I think she like the whole purpose was to not draw attention and to just get in the car quietly and use the key and not set off any lights or anything like that. That was what she was attempting to do. But everything she did before then would have set all those cars off anyway. Like, I don't know how all those car alarms didn't go off. All of those cars were new enough cars that the car alarms are going off if you're doing that. Anyway, yeah. Totally ruined it for me. And no, I mean, uh, yeah, I was, when I was watching it and she's, and yeah, and then she's basically just like smacking herself into the car. I'm like, these cars aren't going off. Like, okay. <laughs> like, and then there's like the dog barking in the background. So like, and it's like ratcheting up the tension. So I, yeah, I understand what you're saying. Like they were trying to make it like she's trying to be quiet and not draw attention, but it doesn't, none of it actually made sense. And any, everything from the garage, like when she's trying to get her bike until the end, I did have a problem with. And sometimes I couldn't put my finger on it. I was like, why is all of this like, what, what is going on? You know, or yeah, I guess it's the fact too. Like, so the phone is so she doesn't call nine one one, and then she starts texting nine one one when like her mom has a bag over her face and is literally actively being suffocated. <laughs> like, I know, like, I like maybe it. go to. I don't know. Like that wouldn't be my reaction either. Like that you point that out. I would go to my. Mo- I would grab a knife from the kitchen and go to my mother. Yeah, but I now mean, she's texting nine one one instead of finding her phone in the first place. <laughs> Yeah, I I understand. And listen, and if you're in this situation, and like I get it, but it didn't feel like these small moments were purposeful. Like they were trying to make it like, oh, like she doesn't know what to do. She's panicking or whatever. You know, I don't. I didn't quite take it that way. I think I did take it maybe the way you did, where I just thought that the writing was probably just suffering a little bit, you know, and maybe they just didn't think about it that much or they didn't think that people would think about it that much, you know, which is another thing that sometimes sets off my alarm bells where I'm like, okay, like you, I, are you not expecting much from the viewer? You know, are you not expecting us to really be watching it actively? Mm-hmm. Um, which is, you know, I guess like a popcorn show. Like, I think that that's probably one of the attributes of it is like, you're not really you know, supposed to be dissecting or maybe stuff is going to happen that doesn't make sense. You know, when you watch shows like that and afterward, you're like, that doesn't really make any sense. Like, I don't know why that person would do that, you know, but it's like, oh, whatever they did. So like, yes, you have to like suspend your disbelief, but to a level in which it's kind of impacting the quality of the show and like the quality of your experience. <laughs> like it's not, it's not small things. And it sounds like enough things happen that you, by the end of it, were like, I'm not, in it like i'm not immersed in the world I like i'm this thinking anymore. too much yeah exactly i'm thinking too much and you shouldn't like it, <laughs> you shouldn't be thinking i mean the the thing about like a really well done show is you don't think about it you don't think about the things that they're subtly putting along for you it's only when you go back and you and you 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 know you relive the episode in your head and you go oh they did that oh they did that i wonder if that's going to add up to anything like that's how it should be it shouldn't be questioning what's going on <laughs> like why why little stupid things are happening so anyway <sighs> we'll cover episode 2 and maybe 3 next week and we'll probably bunch a few of the episodes together going forward I don't think this is a show that needs a dissection of each episode. Is that mean of me? Maybe. Oh, well, I mean. (laughs) (laughs) No, I think you're right, though. Like, we can just sort of go through chunks of them and talk about the standout moments or, you know, the sort of feeling that we got, uh, you know, this makes sense because it's the opening episode and it kind of sets everything up. So I'm genuinely interested to see if the show surprises us. I don't think it's going to, but it might. <laughs> and I think having a few really good moments will probably be enough for me to be like, okay, like wasn't a complete like write off. You know, I'm hopeful that we will have those kinds of moments. Um, but only because we have Tony. 
And we trust Tony. We really, <laughs> I feel oh, like I'm in very capable her. hands. Yes, I will too. But, I you know, I won't say it. I won't get into it. I won't get into it. Um, yeah, so we'll go on to episode two and a few, maybe about three and four next week and then cover another grouping of them. Mm. <laughs> I wish I could say that. I wish I could say that I feel better about episode two. Uh, Cause I've watched episode two. Nicole hasn't. Um, I know. Don't give reviews before you can watch it sort of thing. Which I'm being hypocritical of what I like. Uh, I don't know about episode two. <laughs> I, I don't, I have the same feeling. I have more questions and I have more uh, times where I'm disbelieving things. So anyway, I still think that, entertaining conversation can be had about this show so we're going to continue it I, I don't think just because something like nicole and i were having this discussion after our recording last week is not everything has to be the best possible thing that you can watch to have intriguing conversation on it sometimes it's okay to talk about a train wreck i think you can have some really great conversations about train wrecks uh do i think this yeah. show is going to be a train wreck no i don't think it's going to be a train wreck I think it's going to meet my standards of what I look for in a show. No. <laughs> but that doesn't mean that we can't have engaging conversation about it going forward. So I think it's still, wor I still think that we don't have to always talk about the most prestigious of prestigious TV to have a good conversation. I agree. Okay, cool. Uh, I don't know. Do you have, any, do you have anything else you want to say about <laughs> the premiere of Pieces of Hair? Uh, no. You know, we'll keep we'll keep trucking, and uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe episode three, Ashley, it'll get you. We'll see. Maybe it'll be a turnaround. I'm always open to it. I'm always open to a turnaround. I'm always hoping for a turnaround. So I love to see it. I love to see it when something changes my mind. Yeah. It's the best feeling in the world. I love when things change my mind. I really do. I'm not one of those opposed to changing my mind. I welcome it. I want people to change my mind so badly all the time. Yeah, no, we we want to be entertained. Like, Ashley, like, I will fully back you up in that. You do not like to dislike things. I feel like you go into everything that you're going to watch, like, okay, you know, like, until it, until it gives you something that you can't stomach. Uh, <laughs> yeah, something that you can't stomach. But I think we, yeah, we want to watch something good. And it's rare, but yes, I also like to be surprised. So maybe it will. Yeah. So we're, we're ending this note as, hope, as hopeful as we can uh, end it. And we will see you next week. We've got um, an episode for Winning Time. You'll hear a review on that as well this week on the second episode of Winning Time, The Rise of the Lakers Dynasty. So uh, check that out if you're if you're looking for another show to watch. Uh, I think I think it's a great I think it's a great choice to follow on HBO. So check that out and stick with us with Piece of Her if you're into the show. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you next time. Goodbye.